It's no surprise that cabbage is used in so many recipes. It is low in calories and packed with essential vitamins and minerals, especially calcium and potassium. Since the levels of these nutrients are highest in freshly picked cabbages, why not grow your own? Keep watching and we'll show you how. Welcome back to the Calyx Growing Things Gardens. And if you're new to the Calyx Services channel, welcome, special welcome to you. In this garden, we demonstrate how we achieve near self-sufficiency in food production. We try to have a constant supply of cabbages in this garden. And this allows me in today's video to take you through the stages, the crop stages of how you grow cabbage from planting all the way through to harvest. So let's start with selecting the optimum location for your cabbage. Cabbage, in order to produce these big healthy leaves, because these leaves are the powerhouse of the cabbage, you need to give them sufficient light. At least six hours of sunlight a day, but really ideally you should be looking for eight to 10 hours. This, where we have these pots located, gets morning sun, quite a lot of it, and up to about two o'clock in the day. So in total, it, this site gets about eight hours of sunlight. The location behind me, which I'll be showing you shortly, gets a little less, probably about seven hours of sunshine per day, in a sunny day. That's because it, they're slightly shaded by two guava trees. And the third location, that gets about nine or 10 hours of sunlight a day. So in general, we locate our cabbages where they get at least eight hours of sunlight a day. Next, of course, is the, the soil, the soil conditions. Cabbages, like most crops, like a free-draining, well-nourished soil. And to prepare your soil for planting, we recommend that you mix in generous amounts of compost or well-rotted manure. Do this a week or so before planting. Mix this well into the soil and water to give the microorganisms a head start on releasing all those nutrients that the young plants will need for a good start. Next up, the planting material. Whether you're growing in beds or containers, start your cabbage crop from seedlings. We showed you how we prepare our seedlings here in the nursery in a previous video. And we like to do it in two stages. First, we plant the seeds in a seedling flat. Depending on the variety, the seeds will take about a week to germinate. And by the time, by five weeks after sowing your seeds, your seedlings should be ready for transplanting. Now, sometimes in our nursery, we would go a second stage from the seedling flat into a slightly larger container and that produces a bigger, healthier seedling. So the seedling would be ready for transplanting when they're between five and six weeks old, but they would be much larger than if you had kept them in the seedling flat. Of course, if seedlings are available to you, you can save that um, five to six weeks by just purchasing the seedling of the variety that is available in your area. In terms of variety, I like to grow the early jersey. That's the one with the pointy head. It matures quicker and is much more tasty than many of the hybrids. When transplanting your seedlings, insert them in the planting hole so that the entire stem up to the first set of leaves is buried. The space between seedlings would vary depending on the variety follow the instructions on the pack, but the aim is to have the cabbages grow to maturity without overlapping leaves. And as soon as possible after transplanting, you water the seedlings well. But definitely avoid overwatering in the few weeks after transplanting to prevent damping off and seedling rot. You have more flexibility when spacing your crops growing in containers. Here are two plants of the hybrid variety, Tropicana. I have them growing in pots and I've placed them three feet apart. 
This space allows me enough um, access to them in all directions. Now, let's move on to watering. Cabbages need a consistent amount of water to keep those very large leaves functioning well. So definitely avoid any moisture stress, especially during the period of head formation. But be careful not to overwater, as cabbage is prone to root and stem rots, especially in poorly drained soils, and definitely during periods of heavy rains, as we've experienced here. Sure, cabbage needs water to produce those big, tasty heads, but you wouldn't get those heads unless the plant has enough nutrients. You're well ahead of the game if you had started with manure at the time of planting. Make a second application of compost or well-rotted manure about five weeks after transplanting. I use about two quarts per plant. I don't mix it in unless the stem of the cabbage is elongated. in which case I will heap it up around the stem to give the cabbage more stability. This practice is referred to as molding or healing up. If you don't have organic matter or your cabbages are growing rather slowly, you may wish to apply a balanced soluble NPK fertilizer such as 101010 or 202020. Just follow the recommendations on the product's label. So you've watered, fertilized, kept the area clean, and your cabbages are looking well. But you have to keep your eye out for problems that can crop up, sometimes overnight. Three pests that cause the most problems on cabbage in the garden are cutworms, snails and their close relatives slugs. Cutworms hide in the soil and on the trash. They are more likely to feed on young seedlings, leaving gaps in your bed. Cutworms can also chew out the growing point, causing the cabbage to produce a mass of shoots and no head. The first line of defense against slugs and snails must be to keep the area clean. Remove all the leaves, search under them to make sure there are no cutworms hiding. And if you see any snails, cutworms, or anything like that, physically remove them and destroy them. And here's an example of a pest attack that, luckily for us, it had a relatively good ending. This provides an unfortunate example for me of what can happen almost overnight. They were looking beautiful up to three days ago. We had two showers of rain. I came out this morning and much to my dismay, I see that the cutworms were very busy. You could see, certainly they chewed up leaves, but if you look closely, you can also see the fresh droppings. And this head looks like, I mean, I'm still gonna spray it with um, BT tomorrow or later today, but I'm pretty sure this head is severely damaged and is unlikely to come back and if we look at the others you could see damage so we're gonna have to jump on this these heads are about a month away from being ready to reap some of them are still intact this one is beautiful we have managed to avoid this many times but in this case you could never just relax and think your cabbage is going along nicely so and in addition to the cutworms, I see big chewed up leaves here, which would also suggest that the slugs and snails were active. We made the first application of BT and followed up with two more applications. All of them were five days apart. So three weeks after the application of BT, we were able to reap nice firm heads from all the plants in the bed. By now, you should be wondering, how do you know when a cabbage is ready to be picked? Certainly not these three. They are still in the early stages of folding. But this last one definitely looks ready, doesn't it? It looks firm. It feels firm. And those leaves at the top, the leaves that are surrounding the head, they're starting to fold back slightly. So 
it's definitely ready. And here is the proof. The inside of a mature head of cabbage has much less space than the inside of an immature head. Try to repair cabbage as soon as possible after the head is mature. If you delay, the head may split or worse, it may become food for the slugs and the snails. All in all, growing cabbages in your backyard is relatively easy. Once you have controlled the conditions that slugs and snails may find attractive, then your slug and snail population should be vastly reduced as is ours at the moment. Two other problems that we encounter and you are likely to encounter in your garden are the cutworms, which are really a problem in the early stages soon after transplanting, as well as the cabbage worm, which comes in a little later. But regular monitoring would tip you off to their presence and you can take the corrective action in both for both of those pests um, bt uh, is very effective as we would have shown earlier in the video so don't be afraid i mean i was reluctant to start growing cabbage but the benefits of having your really fresh healthy tasty cabbage ready when you need it, it really outweigh the few challenges you may face and the answer to the ch facing the challenges is really regular monitoring and you can really grow a healthy crop of cabbage without having to rely on pesticides. I hope you are now encouraged to go and grow more cabbages. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And for those of you who are still visiting and not subscribing, that's okay. We're just happy to share the information with you and to have, that, have you share the information with your friends. And don't forget, for more information on growing cabbages, as well as lots of other crops, we're referring you to our book, Crop Production and Harvesting, which is available online for sale at Amazon and BookFusion. And the links are in the description to this video. So until next time, this is Thelma from the Calix Growing Things Garden saying have a wonderful day and grow more cabbages. Bye bye.